And I'm going to, I'm going to ask Stephanie to call the roll and remember to say who you are and where you are connecting from. Okay, uh, Marta Larson. I'm present and I'm contact, um, participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Okay. Marie Gress. Present calling from Milan, Michigan. Bonnie Weber. Bonnie Weber, I'm uh, participating from Shiawassee County. Elizabeth Thompson. I'm present participating from Ypsilanti Township. Okay. Ellen Offen. Present from Ann Arbor. We don't see Steve yet. Okay. Uh, Bennett Stark. Well, I am present uh, from uh, Ann Arbor, I believe District 9. Okay. And then I see Jason there. Yeah, present attending remotely from Dexter Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Good morning. Got it. And then Margaret Reynolds is excused. So you have a quorum. Margaret is not going to be here, right? Yeah, she's, she hasn't excused. And then we're I haven't heard from Steve, so oh, I see him here. Okay, there we go. <laughs> can I can I state that Pearl Wilson is also absent and excused or inexcused? Yeah. Steve, do you want to say where you're calling from? My house. Oh, no. <laughs> let me just write that address down real quick. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got everybody on board here, um, is there any member of the public who wishes to speak? And if so, you need to raise your hand. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Not seeing any hands either. So there will be no need to do that part and no need to respond to public participation since there is none. Um, report from the Board of Commissioners. That's you, Jason. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, as you all know, it, with uh, the presentation being delayed till May 18th, we had to cancel our meeting, second meeting of April, um, due to a security issue. And um, while it's unfortunate, I'm glad that uh, the county admin was able to. Um, get this group quickly rescheduled uh, for that May 18th date. Um, but uh, all the commissioners have received a copy of the report. Uh, it was sent to them, uh, each of them individually. Uh, and then uh, we would be curious to know if anybody has received feedback on that from any of their commissioners uh, and what that feedback might have been. Um, uh, the commission is, in terms of our budget year, um, we have structured our study meetings, which, occur, which are the 5.30 meetings, which is actually the meeting you're going to be appearing at on the 18th. Um, uh, we're doing uh, kind of budget uh, overviews and budget meetings as we go throughout the year, which is a change from what we've done the previous three years I've been on the board, um, leading up to our budget votes coming in November and December. Uh, we did get word that the um, uh, through the equalization report uh, on Wednesday night that um, uh, taxable value is going to go up, I believe, um, by nearly 3% uh, in the county. Uh, and uh, in terms of the American Rescue Plan Act dollars, um, there is no formal um, steps at this point being taken to form a proposal for ARPA 3, as we're calling it. Uh, so those discussions, I think, will continue through the summer. Uh, we've kind of been disrupted a little bit with this particular security issue we've been dealing with. Um, and uh, so we, uh, I think through the summer, we'll uh, continue to think about what might be included in ARPA 3. The um, I know the proposal um, put forward by the Commission on Aging um, uh, has caught the attention of some of my colleagues. And uh, uh, my hope is that, uh, you know, as we move forward with that, we're going to consider it um, and, uh, you know, see, see what can be included in there. I, I do not think that there is... Um, uh, 
at least I haven't heard anybody's thoughts in terms of what to include and what to exclude in ARPA-3 at this point, it's still pretty wide open as far as I can tell. Um, I know there, as I think I've said before, for a what is about a $71 million pot of money in total, um, I think we've got at least three times that amount in terms of requests. Um, so it is, it is a competitive, competitive process as well. Um, so that's, that's what's going on with the ARPA money. Uh, I know that um, many of my colleagues are now on, on are very aware that, that Commission on Aging is coming <laughs> May 18th. And so I expect a good reception. And I, I really do think it's gonna be an engaged group. Um, having a lot of time to read through the report prior to May 18th, and then some of the awareness around um, these issues. So um, look forward to that. And I'd be, I don't wanna take a lot of your time this morning, but I, and I, I do know to have to jump off. I have a meeting with the Department of Health and Human Services at 9.30, um, but would be happy to answer any questions. Um, I see Bennett. Uh, raising his hand and Stephen, so we'll go in that order. Well, I don't know if my question is appropriate, but is it public knowledge uh, the nature of the security uh, issue? Can you um, answer the question? What is the security issue? Uh, there, uh, I, I don't necessarily want to talk a whole lot about it. Um, but there, there is reason for, for those of us at the commission. To, canceling a meeting is a big deal. I'll put it that way. Um, there is, uh, um, we would only do that in, in an instance like this if, if we felt that our, our physical beings were being threatened. Um, so um, yeah, we, are, we are dealing with a situation where, where we've got... Um, um, what we perceive to be a threat. So I, I don't really want to say anything more than that. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. Stephen? Uh, I, I think, uh, so Jason, in preparation, I want to say I'm going to share what Jason Morgan, my commissioner, and I talked about, but I'd love to hear more about you. Uh, you had facial language when you said, um, it's, you know, this needs report and the presentation got your co other commissioner's attention. So I'd love for you to expound on that if you're comfortable doing so. Um, I, yeah. It's about to Jason, you know, again, it, just as I'm saying to you, it's hard to, to speak of what you heard because it's often different from what somebody said. I'll do the best I can. Um, you know, first of all, I was very impressed. You know, it's the first time I had a conversation with him. He's very analytical. It was very well informed. Um, you know, he's running for state rep. So, you know, like I have to admit that I was going like, yeah, I'm going to vote for this guy. He was just very thoughtful and, and really took his job very seriously. So just uh, um, the, the impression I got was he, at the time, because the meeting was put off, he did not read the full needs report. So Peter shared the report again with him so that it was kind of front of his email box. I'm looking forward to hearing more about him. Um, I think he, what he said about Arbor is kind of echoed what you said. He, he thought that there would be a place for older adults to receive services, um, but he also um, didn't in any way commit to, you know, the amount of money that was requested. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that's, that's where it was. I think there was some information he had about older adult needs, services needs, and then some maybe not as much. Um, and so it was, it was good to be able to communicate what, you know, what we know about, uh, about that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, the only other thing I'd say about it in regards to the millage, um, you know, he is all of us um, have, have a feeling of that the mental health millage could have gone a little bit better. Um, and so that um, it, it's really key that all our ducks are in a row when it's presented, you know, so he made a comment about that, you know, making sure there was strong infrastructure so that if it did pass, um, that we are ready to go, you know. Um, he mentioned also, the, you know, that there isn't a body like the commission, like the Washington County Mental Health Authority to take the money and do something with it. And so, 
you know, that decision about is the health department, it is OCD, is it the Commission on Aging, which is unlikely, you know, who would do that? And then the final thing was he honestly wasn't, he thought he wouldn't support a millage because of the other, um, I, other things that are going to be on the ballot and probably related to what you said, it's already going to be a property tax increase. So he really said this isn't a moment in time that he would personally support it. And his thought was that, hey, if I'm house, you know, rich and, you know, cash poor, or, you know, that I'm in a situation where I might need the money, that extra few hundred dollars to just live. And he was nervous about that group of people. Um, and so, you know, because we might have an agreement or disagreement with his thoughts, that's what, that's what he shared with me. Yeah, and I and so I thank you for sharing that. And uh, Commissioner Morgan is um, has a master's degree in public policy, and he's very studious and um, uh, takes a very deliberate and well thought out approach to these issues. And um, uh, so I, I fully expect that um, he will be one of the commissioners that engages on the 18th in terms of questions and uh, about the report and presentation um, re regarding. The, the millage situation in Jason, um, he is a candidate for state house and I don't know that raising taxes is, is in his thought process while he's running for that. Um, I, um, yeah, we've got two millage questions that I'm aware of that are gonna be on the ballot in August. One of them is the Ann Arbor um, Area Transit Authority, which is Ypsilanti and Ann Arbor only. Uh, and then in Dexter, there is a recreation millage that's going to be on the ballot um, for one mill um, that is actually being put forward by the school district. Um, and my understanding is part, part of that mill levy would support um, intergenerational programming um, with older adults, which is a kind of an interesting take. So um, I, I think a millage in August is not, not on the horizon. Um, although do you think a millage question in November is a possibility? Um, but um, uh, I appreciate the fact that you've had that conversation with Jason. And uh, um, so when I, to maybe go back to the beginning of your comment, where you, uh, where, you um, uh, where I commented that uh, I've gotten some kind of reaction to it. Uh, I think it's, an act it's a reaction of interest um, because of demonstration of need. Uh, and, you know, many of my colleagues are very data driven people. And, you know, when they see information like that, they see that demonstration of need um, that gets their attention. And uh, I think it will lend itself to serious consideration of the ARPA request uh, and serious consideration of a millage request as well. But I think they, um, uh, the initial reaction I got, I think, was from some of my colleagues was, of interest, of like they saw, they they see the report, they see the data, and like this, we we want to talk about this. We want to see what, how we can address some things. So but it's captured no their interests. We're, we're they're primed for the 18th. <laughs> no, that's great. And I will say that one of the things that Jason committed back was to review the needs report and to help us understand what he feels as someone who's a policy person and analytical is missing that would make him feel even that much more comfortable, whether it's opera or millage, to be supportive of it. So I'm hoping we'll get that feedback because I, I would value it. I think we should all value it. And it would, if there is something missing for him, then we should go after it and get it, you know? I think- I, Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And I would just say that um, I, I would not want to be held to a burden that is far beyond what other other entities have been held to though um you know there there's there's the you know a line of thought where you can delay or kill something just by the fact of asking for data and reams and reams of paper <laughs> um, so i i think you know you can analyze something to death but um you know i i, I do think that the, the questions and the need that's being demonstrated here we shouldn't be put off um by some kind of request to provide more than anybody else has to provide. 
I think I'm going to, I just want to interject for a moment to make sure that we're clear that this commission has not decided on the issue of millage. Mm -hmm. So to refer to the millage is probably inaccurate. We should be referring to it as a potential millage um, until we have made a decision as a commission. I wouldn't want to mislead anyone, the board of commissioners or the public on that subject. So yep. I would just caution everybody to be careful uh, in the terminology on that. Um, yeah. I and again, I will also add that, you know, I obviously speak as only one commissioner. I do not speak for the commission as a whole. Um, and just to just remind everybody of that. Yeah, I see Elizabeth's hand is up and that's the only hand I see. So you're next, Elizabeth. Ellen is after her. Hi, um, that sounds like a wonderful conversation you had, Steve. And I would encourage each one of us before the 18th, to reach out to our county commissioner, even if all we're able to do is remind them, here, here is our report, here are the high points, and here is our proposal and the high points, because um, I think it will be a richer conversation on the 18th if uh, commissioners have had the opportunity to think a bit about the data. And as you said, uh, Steve, the, the kinds of questions they want to ask, and for us to stress the highlights, I'd especially encourage you to do that in light of my conversations with my commissioner, Justin Hodge, um, who has already shared three other proposals that relate to older adults and ARPA money. So there is going, so there are two channels I think we need to make sure that we have clear communication on. One is the needs of older adults in our county and keep that forefront. And then some discussion of maybe explaining the proposal the commission has put forth um, and maybe think about ways in which some of these are not necessarily competing proposals for use of ARPA money, but things that might come in. Um, our proposal, as I understand it, is structured to be um, very broad and able for existing ideas to be brought forth and funded through that. So Justin and I talked about the ability to um, not see these as, as proposals in competition necessarily, but as proposals that all highlight very clear needs of the older adult population and ways in which um, it could work together. Our proposal is more an allegation, allocation of funds and ways to structure allocating those funds. And some of the other proposals are more specific policy things. But um, Justin pointed out that other groups have met with him and in conversation with him about those proposals. And thus, I would really encourage each one of us to, to do what Steve did and spend some time, even if all it can be is, here's our report, here's our proposal, please look at it and hopefully maybe having a little more discussion about it because I personally think it's helpful for a commissioner to see the context that these are all coming out of a, a real identification of need. Mm -hmm. um, instead of, I think, it might be being perceived, and this is my take on it, as different groups competing for a piece of the pie and not wanting to share. And I think it's important for us as representing the whole county to, to show um, ways in which these can come together at some point. And, and I would add just for my own self-interest as you speak with your commissioner, if you come up with, if they ask you any really hard questions, 
if you would feed those questions to me so I'm prepared on the 18th, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> so Ellen, you're up and then after that is Stephen. You're muted, Ellen. I said, I always do that so you don't hear me drinking my coffee. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I, Elizabeth said um, part of what I was gonna say far more eloquently, so thank you. But the question I have for Jason is, um, I'm happy to talk to my county commissioner and I'm actually happy to talk to others, but if it matters. But, but I don't want to, I wanna focus on the ARPA and the needs, but I wanna make sure I understand um, how the process is. So does the administration compile all of these and let the county commissioners read them and make decisions or are they prioritized by some or within the county and the uh, county commissioners get information that is prioritized by OCD or any other office or the administration? I kind of want to know how that works or is that a ridiculous question? Oh, not ridiculous at all. It's a great question. Um, and it's actually a, a question that I, I keep asking um, because it, it, there's not a, it, the way that this works, I mean, we, I think we've all heard the old adage of, uh, you know, the sausage being made, you want to see the sausage being made kind of thing. That's a little bit of what goes on with, with ARPA from my experience so far. It's uh, um, the, the way that proposals get considered is that a commissioner um, submits them for consideration to administration. Um, there is a leadership group um, of the county commission. So there are nine members of the commission and four are, are in the leadership. Um, I'm one of the four. So uh, we, we meet every other Monday uh, for a few hours and we go through agenda items. And, and uh, when it comes to ARPA, um, that group tends to get the first look at what package is put together. And that package gets put together by um, our county administrator, Greg Dill, and the chair of the commission, Sue Schenck. Um, so there's not a formal process. It's not a department kind of putting something together or necessarily Greg Dill putting something together. It is, it, 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 it's kind of, there's all these requests that come in individual commissioners advocate for certain things. And then the chair, Sue Schenck, and members of leadership try and build the package that addresses what most commissioners want to see. Um, so it's not necessarily a formal kind of process. And in the middle of all that, we get public comment. So we've done outreach meetings and public engagement meetings uh, where we invite the public to offer comment. We've got a lot of comment and support of some of the things that were especially included in ARPA 1 and ARPA 2 were in there because we were getting public comment about them. Um, so I wish there, that I had like a more linear kind of process um, for you, um, but it really is commissioners submitting proposals, the chair and the county administrator kind of crafting a package that most commissioners would support. Okay, can I ask another follow-up question? Yeah. Um, so when I go talk to my county commissioner again about this, I, I wanna make sure I handle that so that he can advocate for it within a group or something. And so I should talk to him, tell him to talk to the leadership. Uh, I think that would be a good, a good idea. Okay. So, Is, are you with, um, are you with uh, uh, Andy? Andy. Yeah, okay. And the other question is, is, you know, I, I can be really pushy um, and, and charmingly pushy sometimes, but um, I have friends who probably would agree who live in my district. Is that also so? And yes. I, I talk to my friends. I mean, I walk with yes. them, you know, okay. Yep. Because we all know Andy. Yeah. And, and Andy's in leadership as well. He's vice chair of the commission. So he's, yeah. Andy and I are half of the leadership team. So uh, uh, I, I would encourage you to reach out to Andy and, and Andy's, right. uh, Andy's really engaged guy uh, on a lot of these leadership issues. And 
Um, he's he's a, a, a good advocate for health and human services. And he's also very honest and very direct. Yes, yes, he is. And kind. So yes, I have a nice thing to say about it, but thank you. So now I know exactly what to do. Thank you. You're welcome, Ellen. Thank you for okay. the question. Okay, I have a cue of Stephen, then Dina, then Elizabeth. So Stephen? Yeah, um, so Jason, um, the other thing, and really to the group, um, the other thing that I didn't mention that Jason um, said, I asked him the question about, so what was the thought process in creating a commission on aging? Um, because we all have sort of theories about what the goals were in doing so. And I think that, you know, his answer was something that there was some, a perception of needs of older adults in the community without a lot of detail and thought that it would be something, you know, worthwhile. Um, and it wasn't, I, I guess I would say that if I was being, um, reading between the lines, it wasn't as if there was this huge investigation, it was more of almost a hunch that we should do this. And Jason, you probably have more insight into that. But um, the reason I mention it is that he did say that he saw it as you know, an advisor um, recommending body. And I guess I think about in where we are with ARPA and what Elizabeth said about three different proposals coming in, that would it make sense? You know, we have no stake in the game, right? It's not like when we're asking for money, it's not like we're asking for ourselves or our specific, you know, area of the county. Would it not make sense for that to be sent to us, for us to one, you know, sort of make recommendations maybe on the individual thing, but more so potentially reach out to those groups and see whether or not we can integrate their proposals into this, or at least make them feel comfortable that our proposal would absolutely include their priority. Because I think, you know, and I, you, you know, what I heard about the $1 million for, for Dexter, it makes me think that the other issue that could go on here is that that county commission wants to make sure that they're representing their own area, which I hope isn't the goal of this, that it's you know, it's how do we do well by the county and that the Commission on Aging hopefully is not looking at that outside of um, where the greatest need is and not who elected me, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have any thoughts about whether that's possible and whether you think that's something you could take back as a strategy to leverage, you know, our, our thoughts, of, you know, as a Commission on Aging so we can give some help to the Commission. Mm -hmm. To, to step back to your first comment about, you know, when you asked Jason, like, why did you <laughs> create a commission on aging? So I, I will, um, you know, I take responsibility for that. I'm the one who brought it forward. Um, and th I think there were, there were a few reasons. You got to remember, this is pre-COVID too. So this, there was no ARPA, there was no CARES Act, this, all, the, all this money didn't exist. So um, I knew that Washtenaw County was one of the few counties in the state, a handful of counties in the state that didn't have a commission on aging. Um, and we have been talking and I have been trying to pursue at the county level, a, a strategic plan for the county. The county hasn't done a strategic plan for 18 years, okay? So I've been a, a supporter of trying to get this done. And in the process of encouraging a strategic plan to occur, I, I felt that older adults needed to have a, a voice throughout that strategic planning process. Um, and not just a voice, but to identify their needs to be addressed by the strategic plan, thus Commission on Aging. I view, I've always viewed the Commission on Aging as being a forum, not just for the members of the Commission on Aging, but the members of the community at large, whether they're from the Washtenaw Health Initiative or the Ann Arbor Community Foundation or the universities or area agency on aging or whoever it might be, senior centers, but it's a way for all of those disparate groups to come together and talk about issues impacting older adults with the, with the end goal in collaborating is the end goal of identifying needs identifying needs that can be addressed through county processes like the strategic plan, but can also inform decisions that are being made budgetarily and on a policy level by the county commission itself. So at the core of it is identifying what the needs are, but I've always envisioned very much a process of collaboration 
not with just the, the members of this particular body, but all of the entities that somehow touch aging, housing, transportation, whatever it might be, to use this space and use this body as a way to collaborate in, in the identification of those needs and the recommendations that come through it. So that's, that was, that's my vision. No, that's <laughs> really well, you know, well described. And I'm sure, you know, sometimes those kinds of things get lost over the years, right? Um, yeah. with, with other people that are less passionate, not that he's not passionate, but just, you know, clearly it, it is, has great meaning to you. And, and thank you for, for doing that. Sure. And, and I will, I will say that putting this first report together is a big step forward. And I thank you all for the work that, that has gone into this. Um, but I, I look forward to continuing this work and, and hopefully getting at that, um, what I've envisioned is that larger conversation. You've had so many, so many of these groups have come in and made presentations already, right? So it's, you know, for being together for a year, the, the work that's been done already is, is fantastic. And I commend all of you for, for your dedication to it. Okay, so the, so the second, just to finish the second question. So what are your thoughts about the idea of us playing a role in a, helping to helping the commissioners on whether or not, as opposed to a competitive thing that Elizabeth was talking of the perception that we help to see whether or not we could bring it all together. So it feels like it's one proposal with those others being maybe part of the proposal that the opera committee and now the, the um, commission had recommended. Um, you know, I certainly think you can be a voice in that conversation. I don't know mechanically how that, that would get pulled off, I, to be quite honest with you. But I, I very much support the idea of the, con the continued advocacy and the effort on, on the ARPA issues. Um, uh, I, with the, with the very haphazard nature of the way that we're kind of crafting these ARPA buckets, um, it doesn't lend itself to a, a very good structure. Um, but, um, I, I would encourage, I encourage everybody, uh, not just on older dollar issues, but other issues as well, to reach out to your commissioners constantly about the ARPA stuff. Um, it's it, to me, it's those one-on-one -on -one conversations. It's things like the report on the 18th that are going to feed feed those decisions. The more they hear things, the the more apt they are to include it. You know. Okay, I think Stephen, I, I'm going to ask you to yield some time to some other people now. Um, so Dina, are you up next? And after that, after that, Elizabeth. Uh, Jason, who is on the leadership group that you mentioned? Could you say that again? Uh, so Chair Sue Shank, uh, Vice Chair Andy Labar, uh, Working Session Chair Justin Hodge, uh, and then I'm Working Session Vice Chair. And when you Those said that the, um, the kind of proposals sort of come to that group first and that there's like a first sort of, you know, looking through or vetting, I don't know what if what term you want to use, either one, but uh, is that information public record of what actually you're um, reviewing? Um, I saw the agendas for those meetings are not published. Uh, and I would say that the, the way that you just kind of explain it is not the, we don't necessarily vet them out. Um, it's more or less, the administration and the chair understand the priorities of each commissioner, right? So I've been, in the first round of ARPA, I was advocating for the broadband issue. In the, in the last round of ARPA and this round of ARPA, I've been advocating for older adults and I've been advocating for some infrastructure issues. Um, so the administration and, and, and the leadership knows what the priorities are of the nine commissioners. And administration works with, with Sue to put to maybe put together a package of these are the things we're looking at. And then at leadership, we kind of talk about the package and then we kind of craft it. Well, you know, maybe, you know, what about this or what about that? Or, you know, and maybe a department director has something functional to say about, well, if we use this program to do this, you know, we need this. So it's kind of the stew kind of thing that occurs. It's not a formal vetting of like, there's no votes 
of like up or down. We don't vote in these meetings. It's they're more or less discussions and trying to put together something that addresses hopefully what all commissioners are interested in doing and kind of crafting a package that that is responsive to the public comment that we've gotten um, and the priorities of commissioners. So it's not a formal like, okay, do you want this in yes or no? It, it doesn't work mm -hmm. like that. It's very right. much yeah, a stew. Just to expand on, on what Dr. Stein was asking. So, you know, within that process, you know, is it is it possible that information could be shared with the, the commission about what it is that is being kind of brought forward that relates to older adults so that that um, not within the leadership group, not asking them to do this responsibility, but, you know, could then the commission you know, seek out those other groups and say, you know, where do we align? You know, do we have some huh. a shared vision, you know, that could, you know, could make um, a proposal more um, enticing because we're covering, you know, so multiple priorities. Let's, mm -hmm. let's just say for an example. Yeah, so that, that's an interesting uh, point. Um, so I, I, I have not seen like a master list of everything that's been submitted in. Um, I would say that um, I would be happy to pass along information to the Commission on Aging uh, when we get an understanding of maybe what might be or what is even being considered to be put into ARPA 3. Um, mm -hmm. Because right now I have nothing in terms of what's, what is in that package. Uh, we're still simple as far as I can tell we're still at the stage of you know I want to see something for older adults I want to see something for infrastructure so um, uh, we are not even at that point yet but I uh, can very easily share that information once it becomes known to me um, I I what tends to have happened with the ARPA packages so far in like ARPA 2 was um, you know, we did a lot of public comment, public feedback and engagement over the winter, and then kind of a package was crafted. Um, it was maybe talked about for a few weeks and then it was put into written form for us to consider in a meeting. So, um, you know, I would say we're maybe a month or two away from having the understanding of what is being considered. But with that said, I, uh, the next time I meet with that group, which is a week from Monday, um, I will ferret out uh, what what the leadership team thinks are the leading things, and then I can come back at the next meeting of this group and share that information to see if there's some synergy with with other organizations that could be worked towards. Sorry for the long answers. I apologize. I'm kind of rambling. Yeah. Thanks. That was a that was Thank a helpful you. response. Okay. So next is Elizabeth. I just like to pick up on the. Um, public comment aspect. As yeah. Jason had said, there's been a lot of, uh, uh, the public comment really helped shape and it's clear the um, uh, first two rounds. And in addition to encouraging people to speak to their commissioners, I think as Ellen has suggested doing, if you are linked to individuals or groups now might be the time to encourage them to speak, if not for specific proposals, but just for the idea that a significant portion of this next round needs to focus on the needs of older adults, however that happens. Because if I'm hearing Jason correctly, some of the impetus for the commissioners is what they are hearing from the communities they represent. And I think we need to think about amplifying our voice as a commission to uh, make sure that other people in our respective communities are also advocates. Fantastic point. Okay, I see Bennett uh, hand raised. Yeah, well, it was my understanding that we are uh, on the commission not free to talk about specific proposals um, within uh, the public. Is that correct? You as a member of the commission 
you can't speak for the commission, but you can speak as an individual resident and voter. Um, you, know, you just can't speak for the commission um, unless the commission has passed a particular point you know, and then that's up to this body. You as an individual person can speak of your own individual opinion. Okay. All right, I see Steven's hand up. Yeah, this is a quickie. I just wanted to say, and maybe this is really for Marie and the communication committee, that this sounds like a time in which if we could get people to attend the May 18th commission meeting, even if they don't speak, but just to kind of um, have as many people as possible showing their interest in this topic. Um, it seems to me like if we can get it out to every elder adult service agency for them to get it out to all of their um, uh, clients, so to speak, um, as well as of course the representative of those service agencies um, being on that, that meeting, it just seems like this is our moment to show that there is a groundswell of support for um, supporting older adult services. So I'm not sure exactly how to do that, whether we have that inventory. I guess I'd say that to Deanna too, and to anybody, you know, who's um, an attendee. This is our moment, I think, to allow the commissioners to know how important this is for our community, and that there are a lot of voters <laughs> that are really interested in seeing this happen. And I, I will add that public comment um, can still be made remotely. So our meetings are on Zoom, although we are in person. Um, people can offer comment by Zoom um, and in person. So if you don't wanna come down to the meeting room, you can do that um, through that Zoom connection as well. Okay, I see Bonnie and then Marie. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that Jason, um, you can still make a comment ahead of the meeting too, can't you? You can just send a comment directly to the commissioner. So they don't even have to participate in the Zoom. If you get folks just to write to the commissioners and say, we support you know, programs for you know, supporting the older adult community, just as they get those, you know, just response, 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 so that they know that you know, the community is thinking, you know, thinking about that. And um, I, I especially want, I, I like to people to understand that it, it's a non-compete. What we're trying to do is get much, as much funding as we can into for the, to support um, older adult programs, whatever they meet. That's why ours was so broad because there's such a great need. So I'm hoping that those that have submitted their own um, proposals understand that we're not looking to compete. We just wanted to make sure the information was out there. We wanted to offer our services to help to make sure that we could go from small groups to large groups um, and, you know, do a, a variety of things across the county, right? You know, like Elizabeth said, we're just not focusing on one thing. We're offering an opportunity for many things. Um, yep. So I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, if we do some type of a letter, of all three options. You can just send a letter now, you can send one during the Zoom meeting, or you can do it in person so that folks know they can just get that, you know, let the let the commissioners know that um, older adults need some attention. I will add that um, if you want to submit comment ahead of time, there is a uh, like a portal on the county commissioners page. Mm -hmm. And you can submit that it kind of come it comes like in an email form. Uh, and it gets distributed to all nine of us. Um, so that's at least a one-stop kind of comment portal. Okay, I see in line Marie and then Bennett. Well, as far as communication goes, um, we, before the April meeting that Marta was going to go to, we shared a draft email that you can send to your own networks that includes that link that Jason was just talking about and some other ways to contact your commissioners directly and uh, um, encouraging you to share these emails, these resources and all of that with your networks, whether they're other organizations, your friends, your neighbors, um, anyone who would like to share their voice. Um, I can resend those, those email drafts to all of you so you can reshare those now that we, we know it's May 18th that Marta's gonna be speaking. Uh, we can definitely share that. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Um, Bennett? Well, okay. So uh, in talking with uh, varied, uh, well, individuals as a private citizen, are we free to ask them any questions about uh, whether in fact they submitted a proposal and what it would be um, about? Or is that not legitimate? I'm not sure it would be a good strategy. I think it might put you in an oppositional situation, but I don't know if there's any prohibition against that. Okay, I wonder whether anyone has done that. And by the way, the uh, discussions of the BOC regarding, they do have proposals in front of them, correct? For ARPA money? Okay, would they, they are not ready to disclose anything publicly, is that correct? In terms of the ARPA money, the next round? Uh, in terms of specific proposals. Uh, yeah, we have we have not begun to debate what would be okay. in in it yet. So we we okay. haven't we haven't begun to work on it yet. I mean, there are proposals that have been put in. When a proposal gets put in, it doesn't get distributed to all nine of us. It just gets put in, and administration kind of catalogs them. So I don't okay. know what the rest of the proposals are. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I see Elizabeth, and then I think we need to move on because we're going to run out of time if we don't. Yeah. On the agenda. So, Elizabeth? This is in response to the very first thing Jason said uh, that the previous meeting had to be canceled because of a threat. And I would like to convey to Jason and all the commissioners uh, we know the challenges of being a public servant in this in environment. And um, we really appreciate your willingness and the willingness of all the commissioners to keep working away, even under those really challenging circumstances. Thank, thank you, I appreciate that. It's, um, yeah, it's been an interesting few weeks. And uh, I will say that the county administration and the sheriff's office have been incredibly responsive and supportive. Um, and so, you know, we're, we have an environment now in our meeting room that is as safe as we can make it. So, uh, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a meeting on Wednesday night, everything went well. So uh, hope that continues. <laughs> no more cancellations. Great, thank you. Okay, um, so the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes and we need a motion for that. Marie makes that motion. Okay. And I see Ellen seconding by waving her hand. I second. Um, okay. Um, is there any discussion? Stephanie, would you call the roll? Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Yes. Bonnie Weber? Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Ellen Offen? Steve Stein? Yes. Bennett Stark? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Got it. Okay, okay the minutes pass. Um, next item on the agenda is subcommittee updates and the first one is communications. So I'm gonna turn it over to Marie to make her report. Um, I was just going to share what I did earlier that we're gonna resend to everybody the invitation to make comment for before Marta's May 18th presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, it doesn't look like there's any hands up, so we'll move right ahead to needs assessment, and that's also Marie. And we have no updates. Thank you. ARPA, that's Bonnie. Well, we have no update because the um, presentation um, is, was pushed back, so we are just pending that. Okay. Um, so potential millage, that's Elizabeth. Uh, yes, we met yesterday and we had the opportunity to hear from Allison Foreman uh, of the Ypsilanti Meals on Wheels, who's head of the 
Say Yes to Seniors uh, Coalition that is supporting uh, a senior millage. And also Chris Lemon, the uh, project officer from the Ann Arbor Community Foundation, uh, who is working with that group uh, as a resource and support. They told us they have worked on their own needs assessment with um, a professor at Eastern Michigan, whose name I'm blanking on, if Steve or Marta or- Sarah, Sarah Walsh is, if I remember correctly. Thanks. Um, and that is due to be shared in a couple of weeks. Um, they are also working on a proposal for a coordinating body that would coordinate um, how the um, potential millage dollars might be allocated. And that also is going to come forth in a couple of weeks. Um, at the meeting, it sounded like they are hoping to get a millage proposal on the um, ballot as soon as possible. Um, and they said they would be sharing uh, their needs assessment with us um, in the future as well as other proposals. Um, we had kind of a half a meeting because of time limitations that I had and Marta had. So we are going to meet again in the coming week to talk about now that we've heard from them, uh, process what we've heard and, and uh, what, where we wanna go next. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions or discussion? Okay. Yeah, you know what? Um, I do. I got my hand. Even I see Bonnie's hand up, and then I'll call on you next. Um, just a, I forgot. Just an update on the needs assessment. Um, I've stepped off that committee, just so that you know for for who's on that on that committee. That I have um, issues, and so I've asked to step off. So, just so everybody knows. Okay. So, uh, Stephen. Yeah, I, I guess I'd like to make a motion unless there is, um, what's the word, um, you know, reasons that this isn't possible um, for with all the things that we heard in our subcommittee and that Elizabeth just shared, um, that we request that the, somebody representing Say Yes to Seniors presents to the Commission on Aging once they have completed all of their tasks that they um, have shared is coming in the next few weeks and that we, we request them to present. So the Commission on Aging is, um, is aware of what they have learned and what they propose. Um, and so I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we, we ask for them to join us at a subsequent meeting. Um, okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there support? I support it. Supported by Bennett. Uh, discussion time. Um, I see hands up from Ellen and Bonnie. So Ellen? Um, I don't know that I think that's, I mean, I think it's a good idea. I think that, that the committee um, after we had the meeting said that we wanted to talk about things that were said and and I think it would be better coming from the committee to in, to first to discuss it and then make a decision to invite them. I think the process ought to be everyone ought to think it out, have the conversation what they gain by it, and then decide to invite them. Because um, I thought that was how it worked. It's appropriate for me that we go through the committee first and decide how invite them how we want them to focus the um, conversation and so I don't know if others agree with me but that's what I would like to do is have that meeting which I think is going to be scheduled for early sometime early next week so okay um bye yeah uh I know that later in the agenda 
Uh, today we are talking about our, our work process and what presentations and who we're gonna hear from the rest of the year. And I agree with Alan that um, one of the things that we do when we invite people to come present to us is we there is a lot of time spent meeting with them ahead of time, going through what the focus is on the presentation, looking at the presentation ahead of time to make sure that our time when they actually present is valuable and that the information coming forward is what it is, where, what our expectations are. So I agree that we have the potential millage committee and they can work with them, look at their information, get their uh, presentation together, and then bring it back to us and say this, you know, we would like them to come and this is the information that they're going to do. Um, otherwise, somebody else is going to have to do all of that legwork ahead of time. And it really should, to me, should be the potential millage commi committee because they're the ones that have been working hard on this and they're the most knowledgeable on this topic. So I, I agree with Ellen. I think the process should be that it comes up through the potential millage and they can do all of the, you know, work with them and get their presentation together. And so what's the most beneficial? I'm very excited to see what their what they have found in their needs assessment. And, and um, but it, I, I would like it to be, you know, uh, similar to the presentations we've seen. So I support okay. what Ellen said. Okay, Bennett. Well, I mean, I, my support has something to do with uh, my knowledge that they are a, at least in part, consumer-led um, organization. Timing is the issue for me. Um, I did recommend that another consumer organization speak before COC, and I was uh, reminded that there is kind of a list of uh, groups that have been invited. So um, I have a problem with timing and a problem with um, why um, I don't know whether say yes to seniors should be placed ahead of the Center for Independent Living, which mm -hmm. has expressed a desire to speak before our commission. Okay, thank you, Bennett. Um, Ellen, do you still have your hand up or you don't, you took it down? Okay, Elizabeth? I think the point is well taken that in the past, we have worked with subcommittees who then help facilitate presentations and uh, honoring the agenda where we make some, some decisions later on about uh, where, um, we, when we are going to have presentations. And I take a little bit of issue as the head of the subcommittee of the implication that we would not want to listen as a whole, that the subcommittee would not bring forth a recommendation of sharing that needs assessment uh, that Say Yes to Seniors is working on and proposals. Um, I'm sure you didn't mean to imply, Steve, that uh, we would not be open to um, the whole commission hearing such a substantial proposal from such a substantial number of advocates in Washtenaw County. So I did want to make it clear that um, we are being very careful about discussing a potential millage in that terminology, not because um, a millage is not a possible mechanism for funding for services. If you remember in our own needs assessment and recommendations that indeed is one of the recommendations to be examined along with others. But I do think it is important that we are careful um, to make sure that we see um, advocacy uh, as belonging to the advocates and some of our uh, focus on examination of needs and looking at the whole range of potential strategies. And I, I see that Jason has his hand up and I'm aware that he may have to leave. So I'm gonna jump the line and let him speak next and then Stephen. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. I'll be really quick um, as I do have to leave, but um, the only 
thing I will add to this particular conversation is that the Say Yes to Seniors group, their timeline may be short in terms of their work. And I wouldn't want this group, if you want to hear from them, miss the opportunity to hear from them because the, the, the question of whether a millage can go, any millage can go on the November ballot has to be settled by um, the county commission's meeting on July 6th. So I, I, that's just kind of a point of information that there, if, if the Say Yes to Seniors is, from what I can tell, and I was at most of their meeting yesterday, um, I think I was about 45 minutes late, but um, they, there is going to be a push to consider this item. Um, and it's really a, an eight week period of time that they have. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the timeline. And I do apologize, I have, I have to go to this meeting. Thank you, Jason. Have a good weekend, everyone. Okay, Stephen, you're up next. Yeah, yeah and I, I wanna apologize um, for two things. One is that I probably should have mentioned what um, Jason just said. I think that, and, and Ellen and Elizabeth, you can tell me if you heard something different, but I think they did also express a sense of urgency on their part um, ab about sort of making their information known to the um, commissioners and you know and and also to the commission on aging and so it did play a role in why I was probably you know was assertive um, in bringing that up um, today I didn't Elizabeth just you know publicly to say that I didn't in any way suggest um, or at least not suggest but communicate that you know I, I thought it was not um, a real strong openness to the whole full commission hearing, you know, the information that we, I think, um, uh, heard. But I think the sense of urgency probably pushed me to think that waiting on it, um, was it? Now, um, I was, at, before Jason spoke, I was actually put my hand up to rescind the vote. Um, but after what Jason said, I guess my, I wouldn't, I, I think we're better off voting now, even if it's a, a no vote just because what we would have to do is wait for the next meeting to have a vote. And so um, I'm, I'm wondering whether or not can we have a vote with the idea that if a recommendation from our subcommittee is not to do it, that the, the full group supports not doing it, something like that um, because of the urgency, I think, I don't, you know, I think say yes to seniors is going to do it without getting feedback from us or leveraging our feedback. And so, you know, there's a part of me that says, why not take the next meeting to hear that feedback? Okay, I have Ellen and then I have Bonnie. You're muted, Ellen. Yeah, I know. I just went over and unmuted it. Um, I um, really think. I'm not comfortable when when there's a decision made that we that we would all discuss what they had to say, and then we override that. And the, my concerns about that is that I don't know what the other committee members thought of the presentation, and whether they think it's valuable to have now. Even and I don't. And I think. If there was, a, if it's urgent and we all think so, we're going to get them in to talk to us at a meeting. So if we were to ask them in the middle of May and they want to have the commissioners by July, we would probably see them in June. I, I don't have worries about that, but it, it truly does not make me feel that we are functionally, functionally doing what we should be doing, which is hearing from each other. There's perspectives on this committee that I'm unaware of after that meeting. And I think I can learn a lot. And we're supposed to do it at the beginning of the month, uh, beginning of the week next week. I don't know if it's been confirmed. I know I've held the dimes, but I really would be very opposed to even saying, well, we even putting that onto it. I think it's very, I think it's more responsible to know what the committee thought after we heard of it, because we have a different view of everything, or we may. And I think we need to move forward and say, here's what we'd like to do as a committee. 
So I would oppose it. And I, I'm very strong on this. And it's not that I don't want to see us do the best for seniors in needs. It is that I'd like to do it in a good, with a process that is well thought out. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sound so pushy. Bonnie and then Stephen. All right, I'm looking at what we're gonna jump ahead, the next bullet on our agenda. We have for the COA meeting schedule, we have um, May 20th, May June 3rd, June 17th, because June 17 was earmarked for ARPA. After listening to Jason, we know we're not going to have an, uh, anything to do with ARPA at that time. July for first as a presentation and July 15th is ARPA. So we have one, two, three, four, five potential days meetings before that. So um, there is time slots that we can roll that in if the subcommittee um, recommends that we have a presentation. So we, we do have that uh, and it's coming up next on, on our agenda for discussion. So just to let everyone know that there is time um, if the subcommittee decides and they work through it with and they decide to bring it forward. Okay, hey, Stephen, you're muted. Um, you know, I know that um, I, I know that I'm uh, sort of just looking at who's here today. I, I have a sense of where the vote's going to go, but I, I do want to share one thing: is that again, the sense of urgency has to do with our having our input into the messaging that the advocacy group will have, and that it, we may have an opportunity to impact it if it's early. And, and that's really, in some ways, I guess, my sense of urgency. They're going to do what they want to do, right? That's not, it's not dependent on, on what we say, but um, we might add value if we heard what they had to say, we got it. And we do want to, I think, engage the community more and more, the community's voice in anything we do. And so it's why I, I sort of continue the sense of, urgency, what, what I'm really, I hope, I, I probably didn't communicate it effectively. All I, what I was saying is absolutely we should have our meeting, but what I'd like to do is sort of come up with a um, thing that if, after our meeting, if there is a um, interest in having at the next meeting of, which is what I, mean, I think you said is uh, 7th, the, the 13th to 20th, that there's that ability to do so, so that the 20th is the time we hear from them. And so that's that's really what I'm proposing, that we have the ability that the committee at the very least has the ability to, um, in, to go to whoever sets the agenda and say, hey, the subcommittee is interested in on the May 20th meeting of having say yes to seniors. That, that's really what I'm proposing in the, in I guess my motion. If, or, or a change in my motion. You can't okay. change it because it's already been second. So you're going to have to withdraw it and Bennett's going to have to withdraw it and then you'll have to restate it. Okay. So if that's, in it, is there, what's, the, I, and I want to hear Elizabeth, especially you and Ellen's response to that concept um, in regards to me rescinding it and then offering that so that in fact, we do, I think, Ellen, as you said, that we go through protocols that are really important for this commission to function well, and also to make sure that all of us, oh, and Marta, um, so that we are acting functionally and we don't set precedent. And we also feel like all of our shared learning from that meeting and discussion occurs as it should before we feel comfortable that the 20th is an okay time to have them. Okay, I'm going to um, interject that I think that you're asking the commission to take a um, informal vote on a motion that has not been made and I don't think that's proper protocol. Um, so I think you either have to decide to leave your motion as it is or withdraw it and Bennett has to withdraw his support and then you have to start over. Okay, let's I'll do that. Before, I'd before. like to rescind my wait, 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 I'm not finished speaking. Sorry, Marta. Um, I think you also need to recognize that there is a list of potential future topics 
and that the officers are the ones that have been going through and sorting through those and trying to keep track of what's urgent and what's timely and you know what's been waiting the longest and those sorts of things. So all those things are part of the protocol that we've already established. So um, I also see that Elizabeth wants to say something. So before you take another turn, I'm gonna let her speak. Steve, you've asked for my response as well as Ellen's. I think we have an issue of trust that has not been brought out as clearly identified, but that's the issue is can we trust our fellow commission members to make appropriate decisions? I think um, we all take our role very seriously. I think uh, we all have heard um, the issue about the timing of say yes to seniors. I would also point out that at the moment, unless it has been uh, issued uh, in the last couple of days, there is not the needs assessment uh, that say yes to seniors is working on uh, issued. And so there is a timing in terms of their having the ability to share the materials on which they're basing their campaign. But most clearly, I think I would consider voting yes on any em motion to um, override the procedure we've had about setting agendas uh, demonstrates a lack of trust in all of us. And then just as a point of order, I don't know any group with after the agenda is set that there is not the ability for group members to request things to be added to an agenda. And those are my comments. Okay, Stephen. Uh, I am going to rescind the request and not offer another um, you're, re reset, you're offering you asking to rescind the motion that you made is that what you said i did okay and bennett is that acceptable to you bennett okay i guess i am lost um are you, Steve, going to, if you're rescinding the motion, is that the end of this effort? Or are you going to um, start a, introduce a, another motion? Uh, that's my question. Yeah, I, I guess that I'm hearing, you know, Elizabeth, Ellen, and Marta as my um, partners in the subcommittee. And so I am not, wasn't planning to have a second motion with the thought that after our meeting, if we all agree that it can, we can introduce it to the, the um, leadership as something that could be done on the, um, on the 18th, whatever that was, um, 20th, or um, in, gain insights from say yes to seniors to see whether or not they really are going to have it completed so they would be able to present on the 20th and if not we can do it when we know they absolutely can present their finished product so okay, i wasn't going to right. reintroduce it but you're re you're rediscussing something that has you know bennett are you going to uh, accept the rescission of the motion or not that's the question well, I mean, yeah, um, it, it would be the end of the effort or motion now, and uh, I accept it. Yeah, I think okay. that is the way to go. Okay, then the motion is rescinded um, and let the record show. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to reorganize myself here. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is discussion items. Um, and the first discussion item is officers' terms. Um, 
and we ask Peter to clarify uh, whether any of the officer terms were expiring before the end of this year. And he identified the secretary position, which Bonnie is occupying, as expiring on July 16th. So this means that uh, we are going to have to take up a motion as to whether to reappoint Bonnie as the secretary for another year or not at our meeting in uh, on between at one of our meetings between now and July 16th. So the officers will be putting that on the agenda uh, at some point, probably the next meeting or within the next few meetings, just so we get that clarified. If there's anyone else out there with a burning desire to be secretary, that this might be a time to think about that and talk to Bonnie about what she's doing. She's doing a tremendous amount of work. So only volunteer if you really wanna do that kind of work. <laughs> um, so that's the story on the officer's terms. Um, as you know, I'm very willing. I'm very willing to share, Marta. I don't. I. I don't need to hog this whole job. If yeah. anybody has that burning desire and wants to be appointed for the last six months, speak up. Uh, I will definitely share. Um, I think it's also worth noting, as I'm sure we're all aware, that all of our terms expire at the end of this calendar year. Um, as members of the Commission on Aging, there will be an opportunity sometime in the fall to apply for another two-year term if any of us wish to do that. And when the Commission reassembles in January of 2023 will be the next um, opportunity to elect officers with whoever is present uh, on the Commission at that time. So at this point, we're gonna move on to talk about the Commission on Aging work plan for 2022. Um, and the officers, we, we had a really good discussion at our last meeting about what everybody thought should be included in a work plan. Um, we decided, the officers decided to rename it a work plan as opposed to a strategic plan because we were getting too many strategic plans out there and everybody was getting confused, including us. <laughs> so um, we've now decided to call it the work plan and we, you all received a copy of that mm -hmm. and I don't know, Stephanie, if you want to share your screen to show what we've got there. Yeah, no um, problem. Let me pull it up. Um, we made, we've divided into two groups. One is the work plan for 2022, and we labeled that achievable goals for by the end of December 2022, which is all we can be certain that any of us will be on this commission. Um, and then we also made a list of long-term goals. So, um, I'll give Stephanie a minute to get that up on a screen share so the audience can also see that. Um, it's not our intent that we would rediscuss the stuff that we discussed last time. The question is, is there anything um, on this work plan that got left out or is unclear? That's all we're gonna take up here. So. Um, well, right now. Uh... Bennett, I'm gonna let you go first. Is there anyone else raising their hand? I see Ellen. Okay, go ahead, Bennett. Well, the when uh, I was asked, what is um, your um, sort of objective? Um, it was uh, to facilitate um, the uh, advocacy uh, of seniors uh, by seniors. Uh, because they seniors are not very good at uh, self-advocacy. So I don't know. I have just looked on it, at it, and I don't see that as a, um, a long-term goal. I think if you look at long-term goal number two, it's advocate for older adult populations that are the most in need. Okay, well, maybe I'm missing something. Um, what I am, the goal is not that we advocate for older, yes, of course, but it's facilitating the growth of advocacy of the adult population for the adult population. Now, am I missing something, Marta? Or? No, I, that, you're right. That is not on here. Would you restate that, please, so we can have a, it written down? Okay, it's <clears throat> to facilitate the growth of advocacy of the adult population on behalf of them. Uh, 
facilitate the growth of, you could say consumer advocacy if you'd like. I, I don't like the word consumer too, too much. But it's facilitating the advocacy uh, of older adult population on their own behalf. Is it okay if I, I did a little bit of rewording, is it okay if I read back what I think you're saying and, I, and hopefully it's in an organized fashion? Is that okay? Go ahead. I have written down facilitate the growth of advocacy of the older, or I should say by the older adult population on behalf of issues that affect their population. Okay, that's very good. Now, I don't know whether you realize as a group that you're basically working uh, in lieu of, in the absence of their own advocacy by and large. And even say yes to seniors is not really, as I understand it, a true consumer advocacy group because I think the critical work is done by, um, well, I forgot the person's name, um, but is not done by the aging population. I think you may want to take a look at your fellow commissioners on that, on that point, because I believe almost all of us are part of the aging population, but um, I'll, I'll take your point. Um, well, I mean, I guess the question, um, you know, uh, well, it would involve a, a number of questions. Do they receive any services um, as a senior? Um, are they, um, I don't know. Um, yeah, well, I, I think there should be a conversation, but no one is really um, leaping forward in, in sort of telling me to what extent uh, they are. I think Ellen may well be, but I don't know about, um, you know, Elizabeth and Bonnie and, um, <laughs> Um, <clears throat> right now, I'm even Marie uh, is doubtful. Um, well, okay, wait a minute here, Bennett. Now, if you're speculating on which ones of us are receiving public services, I think that's probably um, an unnecessarily personal question, and I think it's probably best left undiscussed. Or okay, well, I am basically saying I feel uncomfortable asking those questions, Good. and you're basically telling me. Well, now, well, that makes sense. So I guess, would you withdraw the question that I consider that there be other folks on the commission? I, I mean, yeah, you asked me a question and I began to speculate and I felt uncomfortable doing it. Okay. So I, I hear you uh, having suggested that we add a point about the growth of advocacy by the older adult population on behalf of issues that affect their population. And I'm gonna suggest we add that to the Commission on Aging Long-Term Goals. Um, I see hands up from Ellen, Elizabeth, and Stephen in that order. So Ellen. Well, I'm not, I really liked it. I, had, I read it and I really liked it. The one I, I just wanna be clear on for the future is the focusing on aging justice. Can somebody just explain it for me? Cause I like it. I just am not sure I'm understanding it the way you wanted that the people who talked about it, put it on. I don't remember anymore who it was that suggested that. If that person remembers that they suggested it, would you wave your hand wildly so I know who it was? Otherwise I'll take a I'll ask the people following you to make comments on that. And if we still don't have clarification, we'll go forward with asking for more information. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, do you have anything to add to that? Well, uh, I have several things to say. To the aging justice, we made that a key point in our um, 
needs us, our last report about the needs. So I suggest taking a little language, I don't have that in front of me, I'm sorry, that says aging justice, that is, um, and to paraphrase, I believe it went like considering the needs of older adults in all the efforts of the county, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, there's language there that I think we could capture to make that clear so we can say what we've already said. Okay. I think that what we'll do um, is, um, it looks to me like we have a couple of amendments to make to this. So I think we'll consider this the first reading of this um, work plan and that we'll, um, whatever things that like what you just said, Elizabeth, that need, and what Bennett has already said, we'll send it back to the officers to clean this up a little bit and we'll look, we'll do yeah. an voting on this at the next meeting. So Elizabeth, you had other points to make? I had other points. The mapping the funds supporting the aging sector is crucial. Yes. We, um, and that will take some work on all <laughs> our parts, but we all have, I think, a sense that there's not enough resources in this county going to meet the needs of that older adults in a variety of areas. But I can't answer how much money and it's going to take some thought about thinking and making differentiation between county funds, funds that are coming in through, that are allocated to the county, but federal resources, et cetera, et cetera. So I applaud you folks for coming up with that as an achievable goal. If we did nothing else in the coming year, but, or the rest of the year, but that I would feel we've done a major thing. Then to Bennett's point about the need to make sure all older adults are representative. And Bennett, I'm willing to end it, self-identify as a 69 year old woman who does receive some services and uh, particularly because of my identity in the LBGTQ community, I feel like I represent that segment, which has a unique access issue with services. But um, I think if we look at point number four, identify strategies to engage older adults, that is summarizing, I think what you're saying, Benedict, Bennett, that we need to have all voices represented and maybe um, our, uh, the committee that put this together can expand that just a little bit, engage older adults to help ensure representation by all uh, segments of the older adult community. That's really wonky way of phrasing it, so don't steal it. Or um, you could say, because it seems to me the point of engaging the older adults is to share their stories. So what you're saying, Bennett, you know, an older adult has this particular experience. They want to share and say, this has been my experience. This is what I need. This is what my experience engaging as an older adult with uh, services that are offered etc. So I'll leave the wordsmithing to other people, but I think if we expand, engage to go, <coughs> to answer, why are we engaging them? That's going to help clarify. And that's the end of my comments. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, Stephen, and then Bennett. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually have a, a bunch of things. Um, so one is in regards to short term the um, for 22, I do think that we've had a lot of discussion about diversity and um, ensuring that we hear the voices of um, people of color um, and other um, of the population of Washtenaw County that um, are up underrepresented and um, the importance, even though we don't choose com um, Commission on Aging members, that we um, hear from and um, somehow 
acknowledge and, and I don't know, come up with a statement um, of the importance of it, especially as the county thinks about new members and you know who who should participate and what our agendas should be in meetings, et cetera. So that that's you know short term. I think that's an important 2022 issue. In the longer term, there are a few things that I just wanted to mention that I thought were important. One is um, um, identify groups or agencies in the counties that are working on concerns. It feels like we should have something like partner with as opposed to identify um, and also to look at any gaps in that. Um, and um, so I just wanted to mention that in regards to sort of the wording or, um, and, and here's and one population that I think is important to call out is the homebound and the near homebound and their caregivers because it's a group of people that we haven't even identified fully who they are and are often the point people who have no voice and are, are really having difficult, complex situations in which, you know, they're invisible to most and have, um, you know, again, high, high readmissions, you know, hospitalizations and just frailty, et cetera, and suffering caregivers. So wanted to call that out as part of a long-term goal is to both understand that population and ensure that we are um, sort of looking at how we can uh, fill gaps in that population. Um, I also think that support of housing, you know, since our goal is aging in place, I think as part of our vision of how we can be supportive, um, that topic is one that I thought really should be in the long-term goal. Um, end of life issues, um, it feels like there are other communities that have really focused in on ensuring that people have documented their wishes if they want to, and that now with a Michigan Post, there's an ability to even have physician orders so that people aren't at home or homebound that have an illness, a serious illness, don't have to be coded in their home if they're a documentation of their wishes. And I think our community hasn't done that yet and we would benefit from that. Um, and then the last thing I guess I would, or, or last two things is one is that we, we have the opportunity to inventory potential funding that could come into our community. I think that's been mentioned many a time. There's loads of grants that are going to other communities when they can go to us by national and local foundations that we can help to facilitate um, and other sources of funding that could come into to our community that we haven't really gone after. And I think with the help of the, the university, um, we, we can bring a lot of dollars in and support innovation that maybe we couldn't with the limited dollars that the government has. Um, and then finally, with the university and Trinity being major health systems with, you know, um, significant um, people resources and financial resources, I think a long-term goal of the commission would be to engage the university and Trinity in our mission to reduce the gaps in care for older adult services. And when I say the university, I'm not just saying, you know, nurses and doctors, I think, there's opportunities in engineering to work on technology and social work and non-medical to help us transportation and that we, us learning about what the opportunities are at the university and pulling both the faculty and the students into our goals could have a lot of benefit. So I think that as a long-term goal would be a really important one for the group so that we're, we're leveraging the, the richness of our of our county. Thank you, um, Bennett. And then well, uh, I want to thank um, Elizabeth uh, for sharing her, um, I guess, story. That's the term she used, and and say that uh, apart from me, she's the only one on the commission to do so, and that may mean that. Uh, Maybe there is one other who doesn't wish to, or maybe there is none other. But the very fact that Marta, um, as we both felt uh, uncomfortable um, <clears throat> about the question, and Marta 
um, implied or said that it was something akin to an invasion of privacy. But what I, um, it seems to me that um, the sharing of stories uh, is a positive um, step, especially because we are uh, dealing with aging problems. But it's not the only uh, issue. The, the only, the other significant issue is that there are no, virtually no, um, <clears throat> uh, organizations, informal or otherwise, dealing with um, I, the aging. The Center for Independent Living, which is an ongoing group, deals with the disabled and uh, some or most uh, seniors may be uh, disabled, but I don't know whether they really apply for um, senior services with social security or the, excuse me. So um, I do think that uh, if you will, my objective is um, a valid one. Um, and, um, and if it leads to the very fact that we, uh, I and March have felt uncomfortable with the question, it seems to me is, uh, <clears throat> indicates it, but we can all agree on the absence of, um, to me at least, of informal organizations or groups of the aged dealing with the aged problems uh, would be a, um, is obvious. Okay, so, Barney. I think you're muted, Bonnie. All right, I got a, I got a couple of things to talk about what we've been talking about. Stephen, I think just about everything that you said is very valid, but it's also covered in what we have in our long-term and short-term goals. My feeling is the broader a statement is, the better a statement is. Many of the things that you say can be sub bullets under just uh, and everything that we have listed. I would prefer to have much broader terms such as continue to have and improve an open dialogue with the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners rather than speak to the Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners about diversity. That's just one bullet under that point that we have already had an ongoing dialogue with and I expect that we will continue to have a dialogue with. Um, um, same thing with advocate for older adult populations that are in most need, that covers that's a very broad statement. So it lets us go in many directions, whether it's for the handicapped, whether it's for a diverse group, whether it's for people in need of housing. I would prefer to have that broad statement in there. And then as our county grows and develops and our population changes, then the commission can adjust accordingly. Um, same thing like with mapping funds to supporting of the aging sector. We, as Elizabeth said, that's a huge undertaking and we have that on our, on our radar because we want to know what federal, state, local millage grant money is available so that we can then have that conversation with our board of commissioners on where we would like to fund that money to support senior and older programs. So I'm more inclined to leave, to make sure we have higher bullets. Like I think Bennett identified a very good higher bullet that we need to facilitate the growth of advocacy. That was a higher bullet that we did not have. Um, and as we set our tasks and our work plans, then we can pull out those very specific projects that we want to work on. So I'm much more too inclined to present to the Board of Commissioners in our 2022 report higher goals so that we have the ability to shift and move as um, our county and our, and our um, older adults, the, the, the needs that they have. ARPA is huge. You know, we won't know exactly which way we wanna jump 
until we find out where some of those fundings are going, or if a potential millage is fund, which way those are going. So leaving it more broad to me makes more sense because it gives us um, much more flexibility than putting, you know, very specific tasks. And I kind of look at those as, you know, potential things to work under each one of those. And they're all very good. And I, and I think they're, you know, all very good goals to have, but to me, I would rather have the bullets to be higher. And in Bennett, I, I, I've been biting my tongue here, but I got to say something here because you've mentioned this before. And I'm going to use a term that Elizabeth used earlier, trust in the people that are serving on this commission. I am not donating my time, and basically that $25 doesn't cover nearly the amount of time that we put in as commissioners, as officers, as subcommittee members to work for the betterment of the um, older population, the senior adults in Washtenaw County, unless I have the burning desire and goal to do so. I have no other reason to be on this commission except to serve this community. I don't think you need to know my personal data to be able to trust that I am on here and that my desire to serve the community is trustworthy and, and, and it's goal oriented. But you have mentioned it several times that the people on this commission don't under either don't understand older adults or aren't older adults or aren't sharing what their background is. Um, I think that the work that we're doing, the effort we're putting in, shows our commitment to the older adult population. And I, I don't know why this keeps bubbling up. I, I really don't. I don't care if you're 18 years old, if you're 108 years old. It's what's in your heart and what you're advocating for and what you're working for. And I think everybody on this commission regardless of what their background in, has really stepped up and is working for the older community. And I don't think they would be doing it if they didn't have on some level an understanding in their background. And they have found that it, to them personally, it is a very important goal in their life. And um, I, I hope that we don't bring this back up again, that there isn't people on this commission that understand older adults or asking to share, excuse me, share personal information. And thank you, Elizabeth, because you have shared that a couple of times and, and I appreciate you doing that. And I appreciate all the work that you've been doing um, on the commission as well as everybody on this commission because it is a lot of work and a lot of dedication. So I'm off my soapbox, that's it. I said my piece, thank you. Stephen, you're up next and then Bennett. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so Bonnie and, and rest of the um, commission, the reason that I believe it is at ultimate, uh, utmost importance that we document specificity in um, both the 2022 goals and also the long-term goals is that we, I think part of putting it down speaks to from our point of view at this moment in time, what do we believe are the crucial issues that need to be addressed short-term, long-term. And when you leave things in, um, in sort of bigger terms without explicit, you know, explicit um, bullets underneath, I mean, bullets underneath is fine. I don't think that they have to be their own bullets, but without documenting, whether it's diversity, whether it's focusing on homebound, whether it's whatever it is, if we don't put that down, and again, even thinking about the issue that we're only members of the commission for a certain amount of time, then I think we're losing something. It doesn't mean that we have to do everything done next year. It just means that there are certain things that are especially important that need to be in it. And, and I think that says out to the public that we are not forgetting you, that you know when you put it down in writing as part of your goals, and then, um, so I, I think the more we could be explicit, in, especially in long-term goals, that that's a really, really important thing to do, not just for, the, for this document, but it's to announce that we have already assessed there's, there are gaps for these certain populations, whether it's, again, people of color, 
um, LGBTQ, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my that's my sense of why I think it's so important that, to put that down explicitly. Okay, Bennett. Okay, um, the commission is a political entity, and there are very um, various uh, constructs um, that we uh, aim to um, represent the public. And it seems, and it's in that sense that I think that there needs to be consumer organizations, formal and informal. And the absence of those uh, consumer organizations, formal and or uh, <clears throat> informal is a, uh, a problem. That is the way I see it. I am displeased by what um, Bonnie said regarding my saying that um, the commission doesn't have individuals on it that understands the agent. I didn't make broad statements. What I did say that there are elements uh, that um, the commission uh, who don't live with, um, within an aging community would not likely know. And there is a big difference between that statement and what Bonnie has said. But <clears throat> be that as it may, I do think that um, there is a problem, a structural problem when indeed uh, there are uh, no um, organizations and um, <clears throat> <clears throat> or none that I know of that deal ex that are exclusively, if you will, nothing can be exclusive, uh, consumer organizations on the part of the aged for the aged. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, to that point, Bennett, I, I disagree with you because I think I, in our goals for the end of the year, our identifying strategies to engage older adults. I hear that as reaching out to those community-based organizations and other groups. For example, we have in the city of Ann Arbor, a very large uh, Chinese population with, uh, and uh, there are older adult organizations representing that. So it seems to me, that we have, if we accept this work plan, committed to doing that kind of outreach in whatever format we come up with. So I think we, I feel like we've addressed your valid point, Bennett, of making sure that we reach out. Um, to uh, both Bonnie and Stephen's point, I actually am torn Hard as it is to believe, I don't have a firm opinion on this. Bonnie, the idea of the broader goals to me makes total sense having worked with many government entities in my career in state government, also working as a lobbyist with the federal government. Um, you're right that those broad goals show the general direction you don't get boxed into specifics. Um, it allows you to work on anything that uh, falls under those goals. And to be honest, I find policymakers are not interested in anything but those broad goals. Mm -hmm. However, I hear Steve very much that we need mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't forget and that the Washtenaw County knows that we are paying attention to those issues. Caregivers is such an important issue. People who are homebound, who are otherwise at risk of having to, to leave their home to get the services they need. Um, the importance of diversity and reaching out and making sure the whole county is represented. And I'm just not sure that the long-term goals are the place where we 
show those things. I hear your point that you could do sub bullets, but the problem with that is that can be seen by policymakers as limiting mm -hmm. rather than expanding. But we want to make sure we don't forget as a commission, though those key points you made, Steve, and yet, so I don't know where I would advise the folks who are writing this to come down on that. Maybe somebody else has a more creative solution. That's what they're paying the officers the big bucks for. So mm -hmm. <laughs> right, you know, don't spend that $25 in one place. <laughs> so I have in line Stephen um, and then Bonnie. And then Ellen. Sorry, Ellen. Your, your hand is right in front of that picture on your wall and it doesn't show up to my... There you go. Okay, Stephen. Yeah, you know, I, I actually, I, I didn't um, lower my hand, but I'll take advantage of it. Um, I, think it I think that ultimately, um, you know, it's the same, the issue about being explicit and letting, making sure that these issues are in the in the mix, you know, of things that are discussed. It doesn't mean that it's the only long-term goals, that things don't change, that there's different time frame for different things. But the public who, if anybody reads this, and I'm not necessarily, I mean, policymakers absolutely. So they're considering that those specific topics, but the public understands again that that we have included them in our thinking as we think about how we're going to, um, what our role is as a commission on aging. And sometimes it's just to announce that we hear you or that we see you. And so I, I just think it's really important to be explicit and have it in writing and have a document out there that, that makes sure that when we start thinking about like, what's this commission going to do? What's the how are we going to serve that, that we put that in there, you know, and it's, and it's very visible. And so I, I, I sort of, you know, feel like that's really an important thing. It's not about us. It's about, you know, how do we, how do we make sure that, that all people know that we're fighting for them, you know? Thank you. Um, Bonnie and then Ellen. Well, I like the term of, we have advocate for older adult populations ensure that all older adults can access community resources. Um, you know, maybe we can say regardless of their income and maybe add a few other adjectives in there, but I don't think we can get more inclusive than saying all older adults in our community. Um, anything, if you know, and is this, you know, we've got in parentheses down there, housing, nursing homes, transportations, et cetera. Um, again, I, I like, I like the I like the broader I like the broader terms. There's one other way that we show the community that we haven't forgotten them and that what we're working on and we've been very good at doing that and that's in subcommittee work. We've been very good at creating subcommittees when when we're working on a specific topic and project and then closing that subcommittee down when we've achieved our goals in there. And so many of the things that you're addressing, Stephen, could we well, could start a subcommittee on that, lead a subcommittee on on that, get dive into that information, report it back out to the whole commission on aging, and to keep us focused and keep us working on that. So I think when we do our reports, our annual reports, and when we also people can read our minutes, they see the subcommittees that are reporting out. I think that's another way that the community knows that we are actively engaged in what we are working on and what specific projects we're working on. So this list here isn't the only way that we reach out to the community. I think having active subcommittees that would be working on those topics, Stephen, would be great. And if you wanted to um, create a subcommittee to dive deep into those um, and report out, I would fully support that because I think that is another good avenue to show the community that we this is foremost on our minds and we actually have a subcommittee working on it. We have a chairperson, 
and and they would have someone that they could specifically talk to about any concerns or needs or issues. So let's not forget that we do have another method other than this list to uh, show what we're reaching out into our community and doing in that subcommittee work. So I would strongly recommend that um, if, if, that, that could possibly be a, a good option um, to also show the community um, the importance in what we're working on. Okay, I have Ellen in line and then I'm mindful of the fact that we have less than five minutes left. So at that point, we're going to stop discussing and uh, turn it over to the officers to come up with draft number two. So Ellen, you get the last word. I could put my hand down now because I was going to make a motion that we turn it over to the officers to make <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I wanted to, and, and I do want to tell Bonnie, I'm glad she talked first. I, I, I it gave me some things to think about and I do appreciate that, you know, but I wanted to make a motion that we turn it over to you. So I don't know if that's appropriate, Marta. We don't, uh, need, a mo we don't need a motion. Anymore. Okay, fine. I'm putting down my hand. Um, Stephanie, you can stop sharing. Um. So at the next meeting, the officers will bring back a revised work plan, um, hopefully incorporating as much of what we've discussed today as we can fit in there without unnecessarily narrowing the focus of the various um, parts. And we'll see what happens at that next meeting. Um, let's see, we have report from the chair. I don't really have anything um, particular to report, except that I will be speaking to the Board of Commissioners on May 18th. I don't know exactly what time, so don't email me and ask what time, because I don't know, and they haven't told me. Hopefully they will, and if I do find that out, I will send it out to all of you so you know. Um, and I will reiterate my plea that if you find any hard questions that Board of Commissioners members might want the answers to, um, I would like to know those questions in advance so I can, you know, appear to know what I'm talking about when I get up in front of them, in case they want to ask those same questions. Um, I'm not aware of any new business, um, so we have a list of potential future topics, and those list, that list is there, and that is part of what the officers will be looking at when they talk about uh, establishing a list of presentations for the remainder of the year. We'll be adding to that list Stephen's request that we hear from say yes to seniors as a possible approach. So the officers will take a look at that as well. Our next meeting is scheduled for May 20th at 8.30 a.m. Um, I know you can all hardly wait to get up early in the morning again. <laughs> Ellen especially, I know you really look forward to that. No. <laughs> so at this time, um, we'll have a motion for adjournment. I move that we adjourn. Elizabeth moves and- I second it. Bennett supports. And at this point we can have a voice vote by you know, saying yes or waving your, putting up your thumb or however you wanna vote, but you know, we can have a collegial vote here. Yes. Okay. Everybody is putting up their thumb. So with that in mind, uh, we stand adjourned two minutes okay. early, one minute early. I have a question for Stephanie at the end of the meeting. I can no. hang on. If what? You, I can hang on until the end. If okay. We, then we can, yeah, no problem. Okay, everybody else can. And Steve, uh, if you can check your email for the time of the meeting, I sent you a couple. Oh, okay. For I'll, the I'll subcommittee. Look at it. I'll look at it right now. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks, except the officers who I'll see very soon. See you then. Hi. Oh, Stephanie? Yes, let me just talk. Okay. Um, 